Hello and welcome to another Ginger Mathematician video. Just a short one today, uh, one of my students has requested uh, a video on solving quadratics by completing the square. So I thought I'd go through a couple of basic examples, then a few more tricky examples in exactly how we solve these things. So we have a normal quadratic here, x squared plus 4x plus 1 equals 0. And we want to solve, that is work out what x is, using this completing the square procedure. Now the first thing to identify is the coefficient, that's the number before the x term, in this case 4. So our b term is 4. That's going to be very important as we go through the problem. Now our first step is to set up a single bracket with x and we find half of 4 which is 2. So we write x plus 2 and then we square the whole bracket which kind of seems weird at first but let's expand the bracket and see what's going on. So we have x Oh, there we go, x plus 2, and remember, squaring something means multiplying it by itself. So we get x plus 2 times x plus 2. Now if we expand the double bracket using FOIL or the grid method, we get, well, x times x is x squared, these terms, then x times 2, the outside terms, is 2x. The inside terms is also 2x. And then finally, 2 times 2 is equal to 4. And if we collect up the x's, we get x squared plus 4x. There's a very small x, plus 4, which is very similar to the quadratic we started with. The only difference is we have a plus 4, and here we have a plus 1. So we need to modify our quadratic here to look like this one. Now the standard way to do this is to take the plus 4 from here, and then minus it. So I'm doing the opposite of down here, which is plus 4. And then don't forget the add 1 equals 0. Now if you don't believe that this is the same as the thing above, well, expand the bracket for yourself and then work out this, and you should get back to the original question. Now let's tidy this up slightly. So minus 4 plus 1 is minus 3. And let's just keep everything else. So that's the x. The x plus 2 all squared. Keep that the same. And keep the equal 0 the same as well. So we have x plus 2 all squared minus 3 is 0. The reason this is a useful technique is if we wanted to find the minimum point or maximum point sometimes of this quadratic, to so say we drew a sketch of this, this is not accurate by any means, we can actually find this minimum point down here. And what that would be is, well, well we take the opposite of plus 2, which is minus 2, and the y coordinate will be this point here, minus 3. So the reason for completing the square is to help us find the minimum point down here at the bottom. So that's a practical use. And sometimes uh, IGCSE questions will ask you to find that point. You can also do it by differentiation. Again, that will be in a separate video. However, the question asks us to work out exactly what the answer to x is. So now we just use our normal uh, solving procedure. 
That is, we add 3 on both sides, so we get x plus 2 all squared equal to 3, because we add 3 on both sides. 0 plus 3 is 3, minus 3 plus 3 is 0. Now we want to remove the square, so the opposite of squaring something is of course square rooting, that weird tick symbol, and then we get x plus 2 equals, now don't forget this, we need both versions of the square root, the plus and the minus root 3, and then finally we take 2 away from both sides, giving us the final answer, x equals minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 3, and we're done. So the actual answer to the question is minus 2 plus root 3, plus or minus root 3. And then we have solved the equation, and that's what we're aiming to do. So see if you can have a go at question B, and again, give yourself about two or three minutes and see if you can work it out. Okay, let's go through this question. First of all, we need to know what the B term is of our equation. Well, that's 8. So when we set up our brackets, we need to type in x plus 4, all squared, like so. So that's our basics. Now, if we do the same procedure that we did down here, that is expand x plus 4, brackets x plus 4, again you should have lots of practice on this kind of thing, we get x squared plus 8x, so far so good, but we also get this plus 16, which is the crucial term to then help us complete the square. So we want to do the opposite of plus 16, well that's minus 16, and then don't forget the minus 10 here as well, equal to 0, like so. Then we collect up those negative numbers, so x plus 4 all squared, minus 16, minus 10, well that's minus 26, equals 0, like so, and then we go through our normal solving procedure, so that's x plus 4, all squared, equals 26, and then if you do the algebra like I did before, you should get to the answer of x equals minus 4 plus or minus the square root of 26, like so. So that's the basics on completing the square. So it's good to get some real practice on this, particularly when we have no coefficient in front of the x squared. This is your basic kind of example. Um, for reference, by the way, your minimum point would be the coordinates minus 4, minus 26 if you were needed to find the minimum point of your quadratic. So the opposites of the plus 4 here. Okay, so have a go at these questions here. So you've got a good selection. Remember for this question here that we want everything on the left-hand side of the equation before we start our calculations. Likewise for this question here and for this one here. So give yourself about 15 or 20 minutes, really try and get used to the procedure in completing the square. Have a go now, 10, 15 minutes.
Okay, so for question one, all you need to do is complete the square. You don't need to solve anything. So those are the answers there for you. And for question two, I wanted the two answers. Now, for example, with question uh, 2a, you could also write the answer as minus 2 plus or minus the square root of 3. So you could write both answers as one answer, so to speak. So notice also that k, because you've got a negative square root, has no real roots. And that's something in IB we discuss in more detail. Okay, and finally, one more example that sometimes occurs is when we have a coefficient, that's a number, in front of the x squared. Now, to deal with this kind of problem, there is one step we have to do at the beginning, and that is we have to get this as just x squared on its own. So that means we need to divide the entire equation by 5, like so. That then gives us x squared, which is what we want. But you need to divide everything by 5. So 10 divided by 5, well that's 2, so we get plus 2x, like so. And 9, or minus 9, divided by 5, well that will be minus 9 over 5. Or if you prefer your decimals, you could also write that as 1.8 as well, and that's then equal to 0. Only from this point can you then do your completing the square procedure. That is, we know b now is 2, so it wasn't 10, it's actually 2 because we had to divide by 5. And then we set up our brackets in the same way. So we do x plus 1, all squared. Then we minus 1, minus 18. If you're not sure about those steps, please look at the first examples. We're doing it in the same way. Minus 1, because 1 times 1 is 1. Don't forget the minus... Oh, sorry, 1.8, oops. The minus 1.8 from the previous part of the question. And then we simplify the numbers. So we get x plus 1, all squared minus 2.8 equals 0. And if you work through the steps as normal, you will then get to x equals minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 2.8. And that's our final answer, like so. Minus 1 plus or minus the square root of 2.8. Okay, so same idea with this question. We have to be careful about this too. How do we start off with that question? Hopefully you did the same thing as the previous question. We divide by that number here. So we divide by two. It does make things slightly messy, but you just take it one step at a time. So we get x squared, like so. Now minus 5 divided by 2, well that's going to be minus 2.5x. Don't be afraid of the decimals. And minus 3 divided by 2, well that's minus 1.5, and that's equal to 0. Then we do our usual procedure. So x minus, or well, half of 2.5 is 1.25 squared, like so. So now we need to work out 1.25 times 1.25, which I'm going to use my calculator for. There's no reason for me to use the... Uh, no reason for me to use the lattice method or anything else. So 1.25 times 1.25, that gives me 1.5625. So minus 
1.5. That's a terrible 5. 5, 6, 2, 5, minus 1.5 equals 0. Just about squashing it in there. And then we, um, we carry on in the same way. So we get x minus 1.25 squared. Now these two things minus together makes minus 3.0625 equals just squeeze it in equals zero. And then if you proceed in the same way as the first two examples, we then finally get x equals 1.25, so positive 1.25, like so, that's a decimal, plus or minus the square root of that long decimal, 3.0625. So that was a trickier example. As you can see, there are more decimals involved in this question. I do enjoy the highlighting bit. <laughs> it is quite exciting for me. There we are. So there's the answer for you. 1.25 plus or minus the square root of 3.0625. I've used decimals. You could obviously use fractions as well. So that's a, a quick um, outline on how to complete the square to solve a quadratic and a quick mention of what it's useful for which is to find the minimum point of a parabola the minimum point or maximum point of a quadratic curve okay hope you enjoyed it hope it's useful to my students all the best and bye bye for now